Hi everybody, this is Wally with Darkroom Software again, and this is another in our series of the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, quarantine situation where we're doing these uh, training videos. Um, we'd love to uh, do more. If you want to just send us an email to sales at darkroomsoftware.com with any suggestions about uh, either specific tasks or more general questions, we'll be happy to try to look into those and see if we can do one for you. But just let us know. Uh, today what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about how you can speed up your workflow with sports memory mates. So if you've ever gotten into sports photography or you have done a lot of that or maybe you're thinking about it, there's a lot of ways you can do that and speed up your workflow with Core. Uh, some of them can really dramatically speed up the way you do things uh, versus trying to do that with Photoshop or some other software. So I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly with Darkroom Core. All of the things I'm going to show you would also apply to Darkroom Pro and Darkroom Assembly if you have that. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we are. This is Darkroom Core, and this is the photo library. So if you look right over here on the left-hand side, I have set up a specific catalog under Sports category called Baseball. And under that Baseball category, I have created three teams, sub-teams. So, for example, let's say you're doing a sports league or something, you've got 10, 12 teams to do or something like that. It's going to be a lot better for you in the long run to keep those separated out by team. So you can just, uh, under the, uh, the category, baseball, you can right-click and choose to create a new catalog. And when you create a catalog, you call it the name of the team. And so that would separate your team. So you can see as I click on the different ones on the left, the team changes on the right-hand side. Now, typically when you're doing something like this with the, um, the, the teams and individuals, you're going to do two or three, four team shots to make sure you get everybody's eyes open and so on. And then you're going to take all your individual shots and you may, may choose one or two of those, you know, take one or two to make sure everybody's eyes are open and uh, and everything. So then you're going to have all your team photos for this particular team. And this one I've called the Rangers, this one I've called the Jaguars, and this one I've called the Devils uh, because it says Devils on the front of their uniform. So these are just some sample photos that we got from a fellow photographer. So we're going to start off and look at these and how uh, one workflow that, that takes advantage of some features in Darkroom Core that would make your workflow faster than, say, using Photoshop or something. But then we're going to put that on steroids and go up even faster. So if I go to the Setup tab over here, and in the Setup tab, under um, the uh, Products and Services, I'm going to skip through all these menus, Products and Services, Templates, Borders, Samples. These are borders that come with the software. Way down here under Sports, you'll see a whole series of all these different templates. So I'm going to select this first one, and this is a typical memory mate. So in a memory mate, you've got one spot for a smaller photo. That is typically the individual. If you look where I'm circling right here on the big number one. Then you get a spot for the team photo. That's uh, number two. That's where you'd put the team photo. Then up here at the top, you'll see that Darkroom lets you enter text. Now you can set this text to whatever color, whatever size, whatever font you choose to set that up to however you want it to look like in your final photo. But if you put in percent, whatever information, percent, then Darkroom will prompt you for that information so that you can enter that information. So for example, let's say you're doing a baseball card. You could put their name, their batting average, their jersey number, whatever you wanted to have on that card, and then the, uh, Darkroom would prompt and enter that information. So you just preface it with a percent sign, and end it with a percent sign. So anything between the percents, Darkroom is going to uh, prompt you for. So if I double click on that, you'll see that I've created a text object. I put in percent, first name percent. I've set the font, the color, the size, etc., all the way down. So you can choose all that information that you want it to be. You can even do things like add uh, drop shadows and so on. So lots of options for text. Uh, organization there. So once we got this all set up, this is the again a sample border that comes with the software. I'm going to save those changes and exit out. Let's go back over to our photo workshop. So here we have our uh, our team photo and we've got our individual photos. So this is one way that Darkroom would speed things up and then I'll show you that on steroids. 
So first of all, when you get here, you would select your individual. Let's uh, click on the, uh, the B key on our keyboard to load our border. So I'm going to load that one we just looked at and click OK. Uh, now, let me change one thing here. Okay, so here it prompts me for the name. There's the first name, last name, and all the information that I had put in before. So let's let's type in, let's say his name is Bobby, Bobby Smith. And then we've got his, whoops, actually I should have put that in separate lines. So Bobby and Smith, well, the team names in this case is the Devils, and then the organization you know, we we can say that's X, Y, Z, baseball. Okay, so there is baseball. So there's all the information prompted set in there like that, and I click OK. Now it loaded the border that I selected, the template I selected, and inserted my uh, individual photo there and all the information that I typed in. So now if I click and drag my team photo over there, I can also make any last minute edits to it by selecting it, scrolling with the mouse wheel, whatever I want to do, and then I can send that to the printer. So there you have one workflow that speeds things up considerably over using Photoshop or some other uh, photo editing application. When you get ready to do the next photo, you would just choose the next person in the, in the uh, list, and then you drag it back over there. There's our new person in the place and then you got to put your team photo back in there and um, then you can also if you come over here click on and then darkroom is going to prompt you for that same information again and you just type it all in again and then it would be ready to send to the printer so that's one workflow and you could see that could be faster but let's say you've got 20 teams and there's anywhere from uh, you know, 9 to 25 on each team. So that could get pretty tedious having to type all that information uh, in every time and select each team individually and so on. So here's a way you can speed that up on steroids. It's a lot faster. So I'm going to click clear. And I'm going to end that border. Okay. Let's go to the photo library. Now, if you come here into the photo library and you select whatever photo you want to use for your team photo, all right, you may have taken six or eight, but you want to sort through and pick out the favorite one, you can do that in a variety of ways. You can double click on it and see it here, and you can look at people's eyes and make sure they're open. Uh, or you can go to the photo workshop and then click on the magnifying glass and then you can zoom in and look real closely at each person but once you determine which one you want to use for your team photo right click okay select the photo right click choose properties that's at the bottom of that right click menu when you get to properties you want to click photo data now then i've already set this one up but here's how you would do this from scratch you come down here and click add data then you type in the property, and in this case, we're going to call it type. Okay, we're identifying a type of photo, T-Y-P-E. So you just type the property type. And then the value is team. So what I've done is I've set that up to where Darkroom is, is, is saying, I'm saying to Darkroom, this is a photo type, and the type of this photo is team. So type and team, that's what you would put in there. And this is what it looks like right there. It just says type, team. Okay, so let's click OK and get out of that. Uh, that's all you need to do here is once you'd identify that one photo, then you'd move on to the next team and do the same thing. Okay, right click, properties, photo data, type, team. So you just pick your team and click OK. Once you've done that, let's go back to our setup over here. Now you'll recall this template right here had a photo one and a photo two spot. Okay, so to speed that all up even more, we're going to come over here to the uh, this one right here. I've already pre-done, but I'm going to select it. And you'll see I've changed the two. If I double-click on it, you'll see that what I've done is I have changed what used to be star 2. Whoops. Star 2. So, actually, I think it's supposed to be photo 2. P-H-O-T-O 2. So star photo two. So that's what it was. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to take that information out and I'm going to do this right here. Star 
find space type equals team. All right, so in that photo spot, I'm going to tell it star find space type equals team. Now the purpose of that is darkroom. What you're saying there is the star lets it know this is going to be a photo. Find means darkroom, you look this photo up. And then type equals team means we want to look for a photo that the property says type and that the identification of the value is team. So we're going to find the type equals team. So you set that up. This is a one-time thing. Once you set this border up, then you don't have to do that anymore. So now we're going to uh, get out of that. So we've got that all done. Now let's go back to the uh, photo workshop. And in this case, I'm going to select my individual again. And now the, the next thing here is type, having to tediously type all that information in. So when you type the information in, it can get quite um, involved. So if you have access to a roster or something in advance where you could set up a spreadsheet, my suggestion would be if you could get the league to set up the, that for you and provide you all the names and information, maybe on a team-by-team -team basis uh, with all of the information for that particular team and, and league. In a spreadsheet format, you can provide the blank spreadsheet with the format that you need, and then you can pull that information up in Darkroom and not have to retype it. Then you wouldn't be responsible for typos, and it would speed the thing a whole lot better. So here's how the workflow works with the way I've got it set there. So I click B to select my template. I'm going to choose the one that I set up with the type equals team. I'm going to click OK. It's going to pop up this information right here. Now what I've done is I've set up a spreadsheet, a CSV file in advance, and I'm going to pull that up so you can see what it looks like. So here's my spreadsheet. The first column just says first name, second one is last name, team name, organization. Now this first row corresponds to those percents that I had in my template. So percent first name, percent last name, etc. So that's telling Darkroom this is the information that's going to go in that particular spot. Then you've got Bobby, Johnny, you know, all the information across the row for whatever information needs to go in there. So that's already done. So I can close that. I don't uh, want to save anything on that. So now when you pull it up in Darkroom, I'm going to show you right here. Instead of tediously typing all this information in, you just click on Lookup. And then you navigate to the file, and then it would pull it up like this. So then I can just go down and choose the name of the particular player that I need, and then click OK, and then OK. And it's going to enter all the information for me. The type equals, equals team selected the individual um, uh, the team photo to go there every time. I don't have to select that. And then it also, you know, selected the one that I had selected for the, the uh, individual photo. So now what I would do is I would just select my next photo, make any edits I might need to do. Then if I click over here on on again, it's going to pop up my next person. I click OK. It enters his information, print. And then uh, I just go to the next person, select them, choose on, you can also press the home key if you want to as a speed key. So you press, um, let me get out of that and I'll show you. So if I press home, it reprompts me. I choose the next person in the list, click OK. It enters hence information. The photo's already in there, the team's already in there, and I just click print. So you can see that would speed up the operation dramatically faster uh, by just having that in a spreadsheet format and then also in a uh, uh, put that type equals team in there. You don't have to reselect that team every time. So it dramatically speeds up your workflow. Being able to put it all in a spreadsheet in advance gives you an opportunity to spell check, make sure everybody's name is correct. If you put that over on the league, then they're the ones that's going to be doing that for you, and they can uh, make sure everything is correct. Then uh, you've got a whole lot uh, better advantage. If I were doing this on the fly, especially if the player were right there, then you might want to have a secondary monitor so that you choose the view and use second monitor for previews. This would display on that second monitor facing the customer. You could say, can you, you know, quickly check that information to make sure it's correct? If they say yes, then they, you've got it correct and you just click print. So that uh, can dramatically speed up your, 
your workflow there. And I hope that helps you. If you have any other questions or anything you need us to answer, be sure and send an email to sales at darkroomsoftware.com and we'll try to get those together real quickly and put out a video for them during this series. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Stay safe.